Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here this morning. We have a very special program with the Shiloh Community Association. And I will introduce them in a moment. But before I do, I'd like to get our hands on who is native to Asheville in this room. Okay, not the, not the majority of us. So, um, Ms. Norma and Laura have a great story to tell about, the, about Shiloh and Shiloh Community Association. Um, I'm Andy Lewis, I'm an organizer and sponsor of the Million Cups. I love coming here every Wednesday because this is, I like to say this is where all the cool kids hang out. Every Wednesday, we hang out, right? Yeah. So, y'all know who you are. I see you every week or almost every week. So, thank you for coming and supporting us. We couldn't do this without our volunteer organizers. And um, I'm going to just give a special shout out to them today. Um, we've got some great organizers, including Elizabeth and Nick, who are here, and then everyone else is out of town. But we had, um, if you are interested in being a part of this great team, we're always looking for people to help us. So um, it's a good way to kind of get in, get know, know what's coming up and everything like that. So see myself or Erica or Elizabeth or Nick, if you want to um, ask questions about that, we'd love to see you. But anyway, without any further ado, I am going to introduce Ms. Norma Baines, uh, the executive director, the liaison with the Shiloh Community Association, and Laura Lee Puppets, who are going to come talk about what's going on at the, at the, at the place. I'm not even saying a word about it. But um, without any further ado, let's welcome to the stage Ms. Norma Baines and Laura Lee Puppets. Next to her is Faith. 
Faye Reynolds. Faye Reynolds is, is the chairperson of our activity committee. And believe me, we do seven events every year. They're all free to the neighborhood, neighborhood or anybody that wants to come. And that keeps her very, very, very busy. The next we have our friend is Benny McIntosh, and she is also retired from the government, and she is our financial secretary. So she keeps us on the ball when it comes to our business and everything like that. Next one. <laughs> Shiloh was established before 1870 and located on the Wentworth State. And we will move where we are today uh, in the 1880s. And uh, in 2000, uh, we were having some issues in the neighborhood, so we all got together and formed the Shiloh Community Association. And this is our 24th year. We are all volunteers. Nobody gets paid for anything. <laughs> we just volunteer to try to keep our community intact and stay on top of all the things that's going on in, the, in our community today. We became a 501c3 in 2005. We also started the community garden. The community garden is there so you can come and pick vegetables and fruits and anything, and it's free to everybody, even if you don't live in the neighborhood, because we have people that come in and they come, like we have some turnip greens, they're really delicious now. <laughs> so <laughs> you can come down and pick your turnip greens and our bluebirds are getting ready to come in, so that's a blessing for us. <coughs> also, uh, we, <laughs> uh, the cookbook, we published this cookbook in 2007, and it's a cookbook with a lot of recipes, some of my ancestors, uh, gave, you know, passed the, passed the recipes down over years and years, so come and try, get our cookbook, try the recipes. There's also some new ones in there now. You know, you don't cook for certain things now because it will cause different things, so. <laughs> you, just you just don't do that. Okay, this is our pavilion. Okay, that was done by AB Tech. And we did it with an outside city grant. And it was very uh, rewarding to have the students to come there and show the talent they have and, and, and build this uh, pavilion for us. This pavilion is used for so many things. Like we have all our, you know, our activities as historical day. We have uh, garden days with, down there and they can sit under the green and do different things. Okay, the next is our amphitheater. And we partnered with Two Little Honey for that, Two Little Honey Cafe. They built this for us along with the pizza oven, and believe me, it works fine. <laughs> <laughs> we have a young lady that comes and she does, we have events and she cooks the pizza, and we just, just have a ball with fellowship and <laughs> okay, I told you about our garden days. Also, uh, we have uh, free markets. We have free markets where you can come and get different foods out of the garden. Some, some we have some food that is donated to us, so we have additional things that you can get. So we encourage you to come to our free markets and, and get the things. We have flowers too. We love flowers. <laughs> You know, there's, so you can pick those and go home. You know, when I was young, my grandmother had flowers all in her garden. So each week, we would go out there and make a flower arrangement for the center of the dining room table. That was the thing to do. So you learn how to do flower arrangement very early in your life. <laughs> and, and, and we enjoyed doing that. And there were so many different flowers that my grandmother would have so many different flowers in the garden. Okay, next slide. These are our some. <laughs> some. <laughs> These are some of our um, partners, and we couldn't do anything without our partners. We really could. They have been so good to us. We do grants, and you will see some. We have 
We do Brass Dogwood, Ramble, uh, the Ridge Foundation, uh, Western North Carolina. We, get, we do grants to do what we need to do. Otherwise, we would not have the funds to do them. And we're so thankful. We also, uh, with the YMCA, we have a Zoom class. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have to get our exercise right. So we have a Zoom class at the YMCA uh, Health and Swift. We also have health classes that we take at the Linwood Crump Recreation Complex. And that's done with a member, which I told you about, and, and Echo. And that's with Kathy Avery. Most people have heard about Kathy Avery. She does these health programs. She goes into the homes and helps people, you know, that need help and all sorts of things. So we're very happy to have both of them in the neighborhood. Okay, this is our mural. Uh, it's, uh, we had to rezap our ju justice mural because of the sun, you know, and everything that was getting into the picture. So this is our new one that we're putting up. It has our shallow legacy art right in the center of it. And that was done by our community engagement people at Warren Wilson. Because we work with three different pe uh, groups of people. That's Warren Wilson, UNCA, and Lawrence Hill. That's our community engagement people. And we've learned so much. I do at my age. I learned a lot from the young people. All the technical stuff, <laughs> they, they are there. Uh, we will tell you about our channel, channel tour that they put together, which is really something. And how they did it, you know, they just, they put the booklet together, they changed my voice in it, they just did so many things. So come and take our tour, <laughs> and Lord, they will tell you more about that. Uh, and this, that depicts a lot of uh, the things that happen in Java. Okay, next picture. Okay. I will give it to Lord Lee at this time. Thank you very much.
grow. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm their fundraiser, land development, and um, I also support a grant writing. So Shiloh's stats are that it's 240 acres. It's 1,200 households and 5,699 people. Back in the day, the population was probably 85 to 90 percent African American. Today, it's about 25 percent African American. So it's kind of the oldest African American community in Asheville. And so it's pretty profound, right? All the other, you know, there's five legacy neighborhoods, and Shiloh's one of them, but it really has a landmass that most communities don't. And that's due to Ms. Norma and the association and that strong volunteerism, that activism. Historically, Shiloh was approached by Rosenwald to have a school in, 19, in the 1920s. Black children couldn't go to school. So the community raised 30, well, the total cost, I'm so sorry, was $34,000. They raised $17,000 through fish fries and bake sales. So that's a testament. That's a testament to resilience and that no matter what spirit and that volunteerism that Ms. Norma speaks of. These community members, if you started to put a dollar amount <laughs> to what they've done over a 24 year period, it's, I started to do the math. <laughs> and I was like, I think that equates to around five million dollars. <laughs> so the big visions of what they have, you know, they they wrote a 2025 plan in um, uh, 2000 uh, over a nine-year period that was adopted by city council in 2010. And that vision of that plan it really is a strategic plan. They have done everything incrementally with volunteers. You know, I mean, it's just crazy. So, anyway, next slide. <laughs> okay, so part of the vision of the association is to continue to buy back their land. The garden was donated by Lawrence Wilson, who is the last surviving um, trustee of the community league. And that garden has been a community space forever. Habitat donated more land and we connected those two, pe two pieces of property, it was 0.61 acres. <coughs> and then there was another land acquisition through a donation to Asheville Eye Associates. And one of our crowning events last year, as a result of having our first annual gala, we took on a note to pay off property. Next slide. Sorry, I'm not exactly getting these slides right. Oh, anyway, yeah, this will help. This is as much money as this. Um, this is the property that was donated by Asheville Eye Associates, kind of shaped like a tea kettle. This property right here was on the auction block, and the association took action, and with a, a local funder, we were able to take out a note over a two-year period. Pretty exciting. So we've expanded our um, acreage in Shiloh to 2.26 acres, which is remarkable. And it's our vision, our big vision, is to continue buying that property, have affordable housing, and allow, you know, allow people to come back. Because if you think of a historical, um, Shiloh originated the Four Bell Arm on Belmore State, right? So, when George Vanderbilt came to the residents, he approached them and he said, hey, I want your land. What they said was, no. And he said, well, what's it gonna say? And he said, our graves and our church are here. So this historical, spiritual connection to like ancestors, the graves were exhumed from old Shiloh and moved to new Shiloh, which is what we're talking about now. So if you come take a Shine on Shiloh tour, you will see those graves. And those graves are probably dating back to 1780. They're stones. And the church was also moved and added um, to the National Historic Registry last year. And that was thanks to Ms. 
If the children need a physical to play ball or whatever, come to our research center. And we will have the opportunity also to have an exercise class or whatever we need in this building so that the community will strive. It's, best, it's very important for the Charlotte community and the residents to realize that they have somewhere to come and they will get the help they need. Sometimes as Afro-Americans, we don't know where to go or we'll turn, you know, we'll turn away. But that is important that we be there. The association and all its members be there to help our children survive. Uh, a few, well, maybe a few months ago, we were doing cursive writing at the board. Because kids don't know how to sign their name anymore. I thought, I said, this is terrible. I said, we need to learn. If you can't, if you can't sign your name, you can't read it either. Because if you don't know how to write cursive, you can't read it. So what are, how are our children signing their names at least? Are they written all the time? I, and I went to some of the teachers, I said, what is going on in the school? You know, some of the teachers in our neighborhood, and I said, what is going on? But then I teach the basics. You know, the basics, how to sign your name, what, you know, how to do that. And then I was looking at a program, and they asked, um, they asked uh, the, the people, how do you send a card, you know, a card, birthday card, or a uh, Mother's Day card, or whatever, they didn't know where to put the stamp. <laughs> you know, just little things that our kids need to know how to do. They didn't know where to put, they didn't know where to put the address, and I was amazed at that. What is being taught in the schools? At least teach the basics. <laughs> you know, so, this is what we want in the resource center, and we want people to feel free to come to us, and we want to have those resources in the center. Organizing around that, trying to figure out how that happened. 
And then, um, yeah, it's a great program. And then um, IUI Pros June Pub Club Pickleball at ASC. That's a mouthful. But um, ASC is right around the corner on Pox Avenue. Some pizza from Pies Off, so come on by. Pickleball is lots of fun. And if you would like to present, here's the QR code. So um, we're a friendly bunch, safe space, good place to spend your Wednesday mornings. And that's it.